We're Ray and Candace. From Need More Designs in Portland, Oregon. We like good design and great stories. We also love coffee and discovering new and amazing coffee roasters. Did you know that over 2 billion cups of coffee are consumed in the world every day? And there are thousands of small and large roasters out there roasting phenomenal coffee. Join us as we discover new coffee, one bag, one episode at a time. This is Unpacking Coffee. Konnichiwa, watashi no namo wa Candice. And Ray. <laughs> and we are Unpacking Coffee. Today we're unpacking Trunk Coffee out of Nagoya, Japan. Very exciting, yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Trunk, Candice? Sure, so uh, Trunk was is co-owned by Yasuo Suzuki and Kyuhoto Tanaka. And uh, they were founded in 2014 in Nagoya, um, which I believe is Yasuo's hometown. And they are incredibly influenced by Scandinavian culture and design. Yeah. And so their, their bags are just friendly and cheery, as is their cafe. Um, yeah, look at these happy little guys. <laughs> they want to be your friend. They want to be your friend. So we also had a chance to talk to Richard Sandlin a little bit about Japanese coffee culture. What would you say is the unique Japanese perspective on coffee? Atmosphere. So I'm Richard Sandlin. I'm the general manager of Royal Coffee's newest project, the Crown Royal Coffee Lab and Tasting Room. In 2010, I lived and worked and played in bands uh, in the greater Tokyo area. A couple of times I've had the opportunity to go uh, throughout the country uh, speaking, lecturing, or training. Uh, on coffee sustainability or coffee cup quality excellence. I think atmosphere and customer service in a Japanese coffee environment trumps product quality, although product quality tends to be typically high overall because the Japanese consumer tends to be very particular uh, in terms of what they like, what they don't like. Almost universal um, in any Japanese uh, coffee drinking environment, whether it's uh, the older style Kisaten culture, uh, which is Japan's uh, original style of coffee house, down to the sleekest and utmost third wave that would make cities like San Francisco feel at home, uh, the attention to detail in the atmosphere uh, is, is very unique and very distinct. Since 2010, Japanese coffee culture, uh, at least the the placement of the Western perspective of third wave coffee culture has certainly changed. So if you think about Japan uh, in many other contexts, many people might think this is a place that has its own unique sense of style, its own unique sense of culture, but is also a place that borrows and reinvents. Uh, same is true for coffee. So this is a place that very much has a unique and distinct coffee culture but it's also a place that borrows and reinvents. So in 2009, 2010, uh, there is a very uh, distinct Japanese coffee culture that still exists. Maybe there might be a little bit more smattering of Western uh, perspective of third wave, um, but those things run parallel in Japan in a way that's really, really interesting. So how much has it changed? I don't know if it's changed. So something interesting about coffee in Japan is that there was this almost 200 year period where it was called the Sokoku, where uh, I think it was like 1858, mm -hmm. that um, there were very limited imports into Japan. And so coffee was one of those things that just like wasn't getting into the country. The really big importing didn't happen until like 1888. So is coffee big in Japan though? Huge! Really? They're one of the biggest importers of coffee in the world, <laughs> and it's and it's growing. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. The space itself is really, really interesting too. Mm -hmm. It's got a little parklet out front. We love parklets. Parklet. And you were talking a little bit about how the the style of decor. I think that a lot of coffee roasters that are popping up in Japan are emulating that sort of um, brick wall, modern industrial feel, and that trunk is really um, 
influenced by Scandinavian design. They have cheery light. They have um, rainbow dishes, and and the tile is all different colors. And it's just really about um, delight and joy, which is. It's interesting because they say they're influenced by Scandinavian design, but when I think about that kind of design, like that's what Japan is to me. It's just like super bright, super cheery, like a marriage of sort of like maybe Scandinavian design and Japanese aesthetic. Nice hat. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Candace. Domare gato, trunk coffee from Nagoya. We love this coffee. Um, awesome. And a final clap. That's my rice cooker. Oh, what? Fresh rice is really something that uh, the Sandlin family values. Um.